Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. <coughs> me. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, altogether the number of names was about 120, and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and failing headlong, he burst open into the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all of those dwelling in Jerusalem. So that field is called, in their own language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all this time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in the ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning at the 11th verse. Jesus said, Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Open your word to us now, O Lord, for your word is life. But him who has ears, let him hear. And Lord, let our hearts be open and our minds be open all that you have for us. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. 
I want you to say with me a little sentence if you care to. It is better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. It is better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. Like a lot of you, I have wonderful friends in this community that I've had a chance to meet, especially over the past six years since we've been here. Spec Ops folks. One of my friends that I value very much is a retired Navy SEAL. And he told me that phrase, it is better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. And I said, John, what, what do you mean by that? And he let, gave me a chance to see into his world. And you know, when a seal starts to talk, <coughs> you never know what you're going to hear, right? Mm -hmm. But the profound wisdom of this man and it, uh, as part of his duty, he was also a medic for a SEAL team. Now, he told, told me some interesting things about his life. And he told me that for his particular SEAL team, they kept an anvil. You know what I'm talking about by an anvil. Yeah. This is one of the most ancient of tools used even going back to before the Iron Age anvils really were, were rocks upon which other things could be hammered and shaped and formed. The most effective anvils are not made cheaply. They are fired and they use only the best iron to accomplish the job that they have because a cheap anvil will crumble and fall apart, will lose its shape and its form. And that shape is so important. We know if we ever want to go to Colonial Williamsburg and see the blacksmith at work hammering and pounding and firing and then taking that metallic object and hammering those big muscles, hammering whatever he is hammering upon that anvil to give it its shape and its form. John was telling me that they keep an anvil because it's part of their custom that when they receive a new team member, that they have a little special treat in store for it. Well, I thought that was very intriguing. See, I told him, I, I said, I thought you would just welcome a new team member because he'd already been through buds and he'd already been through training and everything. And he says, yeah, but they hadn't been welcomed on to this team. They have to earn their place on this particular team. Not just by their, by their skills and the things that they can do, but by their heart and their mind. And so we have a little special thing we do with them. He said, we, we take the new team member and we give them a brand new sledgehammer. And the new team member takes that sledgehammer and just pounds it one after another. And they pound it and pound it and pound it until either the head on the sledgehammer breaks apart or the wooden handle breaks apart. But it's going to take, there is something because you see that anvil ain't going to be the one that gives. 
And the idea of the whole thing is that it's better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. And what the folks on his team and their patches, incidentally, happen to have an anvil on them. Did you know that? <clears throat> because they value that whole idea that it's better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. That when they go out to do a job, that they go out and they do the job, they do it right, they do it accurately, and they do it as a unit, regardless of what happens. Now I got another friend of mine who's also a SEAL. And I asked him, tell me about, like the SEALs, tell me, what were the folks that comprise the, the team? So do they, they all have, like, tell me about them. Well, I came to find out they don't all have the same political views. They may have, each of them voted about, on, you know, for a president differently. They may have a different color of skin. They may, you know, have come from a different part of the country. Some may have come from affluence, some maybe from very little. Some may have sexual persuasions in one direction than another. But when it comes, to comes time to do the job, they set the stuff aside that separates them so that they can be together as a unit. Somebody say amen in the house of the this morning. They set the stuff aside so that they can force as one unit who is working together. And there's, you know, there, there, there's none of this. Did you hear what he said about me? <laughs> you know, I got my feelings hurt. Come on. They're working together as one unit. And that's one of the elements that makes them absolutely scary to the enemy. It's better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. This is called the high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed. And he prayed to his father that they may be one as we are one. And we know that Jesus is praying according to father's will. Because he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And so he's simply lining up with Father's prayer to see it happen on earth as it is in heaven. But I have to tell you this, if you hear nothing else of this message, understand that Jesus is not only praying to the Father that they may be one as we as we are one. He is praying to every single one of us that same prayer and asking us to be one. Though diverse in our beauty. All because the Holy Spirit is diverse in giftings. To be one. It's better to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. Forged in the fire, we have had this idea that Christ gave his life on a cross to make us safe 
Oh God, keep us safe. Keep us safe in our little cocoon. But that is anything but what Jesus is praying in this prayer. Are you hear me, church? Because this, he's, he, this isn't a prayer just about safety. He doesn't say keep them safe. Because where he calls the church to, where he calls each of us to, is in the messiness of life. Some of you have been midwives. When a mother gives birth, it's just this clean, sterile kind of environment, isn't it? Uh, when you're raising a family, I don't know how you make it through raising a little one, you know? When that little one is growing up and they're like got a cold and their face is like a glazed donut. I call them little glazed donut monsters. I love them. I love them when my kids were coming up and they held my hand. Why was it always sticky? I was like, Aren't mm. where's one of those wipes? When you're raising kids and they're going through their teenage years, and they're giving you some lip. Don't be looking around right now. Just keep your eyes right on me. <laughs> and you're like, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'm going to lay hands on you for sure. <laughs> Boing, he touched me. <laughs> That's the messiness of life. It's the messiness of life when you have to talk with have an honest talk with one of your employees, and you have to say, I'm sorry, we got a part company. And you deal with your stuff. It's a messy place, this thing called life, when you're trying to set the bottle aside and you come to realize, I can't give it up because every single thing in my, every cell in my body is craving for whatever the addiction is. That's the messy stuff of life. This place that you see here right now, we may look all gussied up. We may look like we got it all together. But I don't think there's a single soul that comes to this place or that we encounter in life, regardless of what it looks like on the inside, on the outside. That the messiness of life is what he's called us to, that very place. To know that we are loved and we are forgiven and we are given worth simply because he loves us. Maybe you have been seeking the approval of somebody who will never, never have the capacity to give you the approval and the love and everything that you are seeking. That's the messiness of life. Maybe you're walking with a loved one who has a terminal illness. That's the messiness of life. And I have to tell you that sometimes when we're in the messiness of life, we sin and we get angry and we get frustrated and we bring everything and somehow come to identify with that man hanging on the cross. Amen? Amen. Because I hate to tell you this, but when Christ is crucified, he's bare naked. He's bleeding from every part of his body, from head to toe. So much so that even anything inside of him that remains <clears throat> goes the spear. And out comes the messiness of life. But without that, you cannot have a resurrection Sunday. The place that Christ calls us to, I hate to tell you, is a messy place. And sometimes we do self-medicate. And sometimes we do blow our top. And sometimes we are vengeful. 
Sometimes we do try to take matters into our own hand. And guess what? If you think that that is going to stop Jesus Christ from loving you, think again. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature or any other sin will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It's better to be the anvil <laughs> than the sledgehammer. God has called us to the messiness of life to be the anvils around which the pestilence and the difficulties and the challenges come against us. But because we have been fired in the fires, of persecution and difficulty. And we have come to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And in laying down our life, we've come to realize, I love when people first get saved. They're like, some of them are like, oh, I to see Jesus over here. Jesus did yeah. this. And then all of a sudden, we come to realize, guys in the back are cracking up. We come to realize, that, well, wait a minute, <laughs> where did all those happy, glowing feelings come? <laughs> because we start to grow, and we start to mature, and we get off of the highs, and we come to realize that this thing called the Christian life, the discipleship life, comes with difficulties. It comes with challenges. It, it comes with the messiness and it comes with the temptations. But you know what? Jesus has that covered too. Because in the prayer, Jesus, uh, uh, the high priestly prayer, Jesus doesn't pray, Father, keep them safe. Keep them warm and cozy. He says, protect them from the time of the evil one. See, Jesus even knew that there were things worse than death to be eternally separated from God is much worse than death. This morning, if you do not know Jesus Christ loves you and you have not experienced His life-giving power and forgiveness of your life, it's as simple as saying yes. And we here in our congregation are praying for you We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to tell you more about how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen, church? Amen. He doesn't call us to a safe life, but he calls us and lets us know that he will protect us from the evil one. He will protect us from the evil one. This is wonderful. Maybe uh, you've heard of it. The lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. You like that? Love the characters in the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. And there's one of the best quotes I've ever seen. I love that. I love the book. And it's a conversation between Mr. Beaver and, uh, and Susan. And he says, Aslan is a lion. The lion. The great lion. Ooh, said Susan. I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel 
rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. He's the king, I tell you. Isn't that one of the best quotes? When we go out, we go out together. Masks or no masks, regardless of the things that separate us, that the, the enemy would want us to focus on those things that separate us, rather than the things that unite us, we go out as anvils. And the things that we encounter that come against us may pound us, may give us. Listen, this is, this is no easy peasy, slick and easy gospel. I'm impressed I came off of that. <laughs> I'm going to start taking notes of this up. Nah. It's better in our culture. to be the anvil than the sledgehammer. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. We love you. We're humbled by you. We want more of you. We want to experience more of you in our lives and in our homes. You know the messiness of life that we come from. You know the brokenness, how it seems that even in our sin, all we can do is create more brokenness. But you, Lord, you say, don't worry about that. I can take care of you. You just go take care of the world. So you call us to those places. Caring for, mom, caring for moms and dads who are in need of care. Loving those who are We'll never be able to say thank you. Perhaps we may even experience retaliation for the love and the care that we show. Perhaps we'll be rejected, even as you were rejected. Lord, you know the brokenness in each of our own families and how our families don't work together as one. You know the brokenness in our own churches where our churches don't work together as one. We are not at one. But Lord, by the fire of your Holy Spirit, meld us, shape us, form us into the church that you always wanted, but never got. Make us that church. Make us that place that's called into society. so that we have a place of others that are shaped and formed by the message, by the content of our character, the beauty of our spirit. Lord, anyone here that has a special need or a move in the miraculous, we bless them. In Jesus' mighty name. Please rise and continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. And also with you. A 
share the peace.